Welcome to episode number one of the Social Business Engine Digital TV Show. I'm your host, Bernie Borges, and I am very excited to launch the Social Business Engine, where I'll bring you interviews with professionals from brands around the world who are willing to share their social business journey with you. You know, a social business is one who embraces the culture and technology of the social revolution. A social business intentionally engages externally as well as internally using social technologies. And a social business embraces employees as brand ambassadors and relevant content as the currency to building trust, relationships, and desirable business outcomes. On each episode of the Social Business Engine, I'm joined by a co-host who represents a product or service that serves the social business ecosystem. My first co-host is also the lead sponsor for this episode, and I'm thrilled to be joined in this inaugural episode of the Social Business Engine by Wayne St. Amon of Crimson Hexagon. Welcome, Wayne. Thanks so much, Bernie. It is really great to be here. Uh, as Bernie said, my name is Wayne St. Amon. I'm the Executive Vice President of Marketing at Crimson Hexagon. And Crimson Hexagon is a huge believer and supporter of the concept of building and running a social business. We provide a software platform for the deep analysis of social media, which is obviously a critical component of any successful social business. So thank you, Bernie. Awesome, Wayne. Well, we're gonna hear more about Crimson Hexagon a little bit later in the show, but right now, I am really excited about our first guest on the Social Business Engine for several reasons. I wanna introduce you to James Royer. James oversees all things digital and social at the Tampa Bay Lightning. Now, if you don't know who the Lightning is, they're a hockey team. They're not just any hockey team. They're the 2004 Stanley Cup champions of the NHL. Now, I'm a big hockey fan, and I'm especially a fan of the Lightning. James, welcome to the Social Business Engine. Great, thanks, thanks for having me here, and uh, I'm glad you're a big hockey fan as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, James, as you know, I've got five characteristics that I've identified of a social business. So let's first begin with just kind of a little overview of, first of all, explain again who the Lightning is and your specific role. Well, like, as you mentioned, uh, Tampa Bay Lightning have been in the uh, National Hockey League for 20 years. We were the first ever franchise to move south, and uh, we've served, served a uh, specific purpose down here in that we have a lot of hockey fans who come down here for, who live down here now or have transplanted down here and they've adopted the Lightning as their, as their team. And we obviously compete against uh, the traditional, the original six, a lot of those uh, teams. But uh, uh, we all, in my role, I oversee all the digital, as you, as you mentioned, digital social media for the Lightning as well as the Tampa Bay Times Forum, which is our, uh, our building, and as well as the Tampa Bay Storm at the Arena Football League. The Tampa Bay Times Forum is also a world-class concert family show, event, uh, center, you know, in, in venue. So we bring all kinds of acts inside there um, on a regular basis. So, but the Lightning really serves as our centerpiece. And uh, uh, we just have, uh, like yourself, we have a very passionate, passionate fan base down here. And we re really have taken, um, we really understand as a business and an organization uh, across the board that social is just a key component of this and how it drives our business. And um, I'm happy to talk to you more about that today. All right, great. Well, uh, my co-host today, Wayne, is a Bruins fan, but uh, we'll, we'll, we won't hold that against him. Why not to hold that and, against me? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so let's begin with just kind of a high-level overview of how would you characterize the Lightning as a social business? Well, it's really taking taken on over uh, its form over the last three years, and, and the, the really the watershed moment was we had a new owner come in. His name is Jeff Vinnick. Um, he's a, he is just a very dynamic owner. Um, he understands that social is a big part of how, what we do. We've had to rebrand the team, and uh, and it was it was very much a broken brand when he came in. And how we had to structure that social was a big component of that. And that we're kind of in that in that process now of of we've 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 come in. He's done a lot of things in the community to really um, re revitalize um, the fan commitment to this team and, and show that his own you know his own personal money got put in the building. He put $50 million of his own money, no public funds, to renovate the building That's that he doesn't even own. 
And then he also committed, um, when he first came in, $10 million to community organizations. During every one of our home games, uh, he gives away $50,000 to a local charity to, to put back in the community. And not only that, we, put, we feature that in game so that we can empower fans and our season ticket members to, to join the cause as well. So that's one of the aspects of it. But I think as we've kind of grown, um, we've seen this really big shift in how do we utilize social for generating revenue, which in our case is uh, ticket sales, sponsorships, and, and, uh, and merchandise sales as well. So that's a key component, and we've really made that jump over the last two years with our digital and social platforms to, to, to integrate all uh, aspects of the business so that we are coming together and, and, and bringing social into, into the mix and saying how do, we, how do we utilize this to get our message out. Wayne, I, I think we've heard some pretty good executive support here uh, for the Lightning as a social business, wouldn't you say? Oh, there's, there's no question about it. James, I actually have a kind of a follow-on question. You know, one of the things that you talked about is probably the holy grail for digital marketers and marketers in general, which is connecting their efforts to revenue, right? And showing and proving that what they're doing is driving revenue. You know, how have you used your, your social and digital channels to really drive, um, you know, the fan base to spend more money with you? Uh, you know, how have you connected that last mile of digital road uh, to perform that? Well, I think I think you asked a lot there, and it's hard, you know hard to answer that in a very succinct way. But uh, um, it's really become a centerpiece of how we approach business. We rec recognize that one fans have a, have an incredible passion for this team, but that's a that's a small group of people. So how do we reach that other those other audiences and build those other audiences? And one of the things that uh, we've done over the last year is our social captain program, where we invite a local influencer to come in and share their experience um, through their own channels, and, and we help support them. And they're they're carrying that message out further than than we would ever have carried out ourselves. And and they're, we're engaging their passion for the team to share it with amongst their their circles their circles of influence. So, who was your favorite social captain last year, James? Oh, we, we had a, a social captain by the name of Bernie Borges oh, yeah. who, who just did a phenomenal job for us. So, um, <laughs> Sorry, so, I just had to throw that in there. But, <laughs> that, but that's, a, that's a great point, too, you bring up, is that um, your excitement for the team shows yeah. in what you, just, what you said, and, and we're trying to capture every that. Other, every other person that I watched in that role had outstanding excitement, enthusiasm, and it was all mm -hmm. genuine. Yep. Yep. So I guess, Wayne, to answer more question a little deeper, where we're going as a social business is we're still getting there. We're still we're still moving along that process. And one of the, the big next steps are uh, for us specifically is to really fully understand who the customers are and really understand our products and how they want to interact with our products. Uh, one of the things that we're all excited about as an organization um, in the last six months we've we've instituted our, our own data analytics team that inside the organization who reports to our chief revenue officer and their task with um, really understanding all aspects of the business and not just social and social media followers but it's, it's email it's text database it's Ticketmaster information we have a great partnership with Ticketmaster we can understand a lot about our, our customers and and now it's like putting all that together and so it's not siloed but we can then interact and engage with them in real time well, that's great. It, it sounds like you're really integrating systems across the business. You're taking the approach of considering people, process, and technology. And there's no question for a successful integrated effort of social business, you need to factor in all three. Hey, Wayne, did you catch that this uh, data analyst person reports to the chief revenue I officer? Did. So th that's not a marketing role then? That's not a marketing role anymore. Um, he, it's, but it's very much still a marketing role. So it's, it's, there's really no divisions. As long as we're getting the work done, that marketing role it still serves a purpose for well, well the marketing and everything we're doing. Yeah, okay, so that kind of speaks to the, the issue of enterprise-wide marketing. It's not siloed in the marketing department, right? Okay. Let's talk a little bit about employee branding. You know, in a, um, a conventional company uh, that's not in the sports industry, uh, that doesn't have players that go out every day putting the uniform on and become brands themselves. Um, for those companies, the employees, some of those anyway, can become the brands. In your case, um, it's largely the, the players. Mm -hmm. Speak to that. 
You're, yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, we have a, a great example of Steven Stamkos, who um, is one of the preeminent young players in the hockey, in National Hockey League right now. Just a phenomenal um, talent, um, tremendous work ethic, and a great person overall. He has 200, over 250,000 uh, Twitter followers, which is far more than what the Lightning even have. And he has a strong brand, especially in his, his native country of Canada, um, where he's from. A lot of people recognize him as a celebrity in Canada, and, 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 uh, and they'll follow him around, do paparazzi kind of thing. But he has a very strong following. And I think in, in that role, we really embrace um, our, our, our athletes to say, hey, this really should be a part of what you're doing. Um, you want, might want to consider this as a part of um, being, a, being social to, to extend, one, your own brand, but our brand as well. And we'll work very closely with you in that. And I think what's, what's interesting in National Hockey League is you have guys who are like our Marty St. Louis. And, and as you know, you're a big fan. Marty is uh, just a phenomenal talent. He's, he's been doing it for a long time. He's 38 years old now. Uh, he won the scoring title last year. Um, and uh, as the NHL's leading scorer, and um, still performing at a high level, but he doesn't embrace social media, right. <clears throat> and that's part of his personality. And uh, but you see a lot of these guys coming up in the system, and, who are younger guys who are, who are you're seeing the evolution of it of the process. You get more and more guys involved in the mix, and so they they come in and we're, we're we're working with them to say this is how you can be utilizing your social media to, to really do some do really cool things. And we also have a coach who's on social media, and our assistant coaches are on social media. So this has been a, a change over the last even the last couple of years how it's how it's you know evolved very quickly. Um, we're running we ran a contest called um, Lightning Strikes where we asked people to capture pictures or images of, of, of lightning striking in, in the in, in, throughout the area. And we have a lot of you know fun submissions. Um, people getting high voltage bo boxes or catching it actually catching lightning here during a storm, which happens here a lot in Tampa. Um, one of our players actually tweeted it out as well, which is great. It just shows that the great fan engagement, um, but it connects that player with our fans, which is just uh, incredibly important. I want to come back to the social captain thing, James, because uh, you know, Wayne, you heard that uh, I, I had the opportunity to, to be social captain at one of the games. And it was a lot of fun. It was a blast. And, and I walked away from that experience not just having a great time, which I did, but you know, the marketing mind in me was thinking, how can other companies that are not sports in the sports industry, that don't have players as, as brands, how can they use this concept Maybe you can actually explain a little bit more in some more detail, like the, what does a social captain do and how do you integrate them in? Then have you thought about how other companies outside of sports might use that concept? Yeah, really, you go back to social captain, the idea was to engage influencers and get that carry our message further than what we could do. And how do we do that? And, and it would just, you just say, hey, well, why not invite these people to a game and have them come and experience what it means to be a Lightning fan that may not come to regular, regular come to games? and share behind the scenes. What we know in the sports world, in the sports industry, is that from a content standpoint, people want to break down the walls. They want to go inside. They want to still want that storing a telling aspect of things. Um, and I think that's what we, we're trying to give fans, and we're trying to capture that with our social captain as well. Come and experience what it, what's, what it's like to be at a game in a forum. What's it like to see our Tesla coils go off? We have tes two Tesla coils in our building that actually shoot lightning off. So what is that like, and what, how do you sp explain that? And, and you, you as a social captain can explain that much better than I can as a, as a branded person within the brand. Um, and you're going to carry that in a different level and carry different ways. So that's what we're looking for. I think to answer your question about how different brands can do it is break down the walls. Um, you know, I think where I've been in the, in the in digital industry over the last 13 years in my career has been around storytelling and content. And if you have really good storytelling and content, and you can show people what's behind the scenes, that's one way to really capture that and build your audience, is tell them who you are as a brand. Tell your brand story. Tell them about what happens. Tell them about those, those people on the front line who are, who are volunteering their time outside the office for great causes. Talk about, and not doing it in a self-serving manner, but doing it in a way that, hey, we you know what? This is what kind of things that we need to be highlighting, and how do we get other people involved in those things? So, um, Wayne, in, in your world, you probably uh, have run across organizations at the global level that are doing something kind of similar. Um, have you seen anything that kind of mirrors that whole brand evangelism concept? Well, so yes, but I'm going <clears> to <throat> I'm going to speak about the the term in a more general sense, which is that 
oftentimes people forget whether they be you know corporate clients or agency clients that social and social interaction is about people it's about people inside the organization people outside the organization it's about the genuine um, promotion via sort of a human-based angle and engagement with people and the more genuine uh, you are on social the more likely you are to engage with people to connect with people and I think when uh, when companies are first starting out they don't have that in mind they don't have the sense of I need to be genuine I need to be human and we all are humans we're leveraging technology to connect to one another and to collaborate but I think as people take that journey toward becoming a truly social business it really it, it starts to step away from the technology a little bit and realize that the technology is just an enabler of good old-fashioned human connection and engagement. Yeah, I, I heard uh, Brian Solis actually talk about this recently, uh, Wayne, and, and said that uh, you become a social business when your social media strategies align with the overall business objectives and they're working in principle. And I think that's a great point you bring up because that's what we're trying to do. It's not about using Instagram for a, a, to, to do a certain task. It's how do we support the overall business goals, which is our revenue generation. And how do we do that? And how do we engage fans um, where they're at? And I think what you said there just rings true for how we approach social media as well. So. Wayne, one of the things that you and I have discussed many times is the concept of, you know, what is success, right? So you're on the journey like every other business that uh, acknowledges that they're on the social business journey. So maybe you can speak to some of the successes and to whatever level you're comfortable, James, some of the failures or, or lack of successes along the way. Because, you know, the purpose of the Social Business Engine show is to share your journey so that others around the world can get some inspiration, learn, and you know, kind of take, take away with what they might put into place in their organization. Yeah, great point. So I think you know, some of the, you talk about failures and, and things that you know, we, we, maybe teams do wrong or, or that we've done wrong. And I think it comes back to the same common theme. We made it too complex or, or we made it too hard for a person to interact with us. And so we may do like some sort of contest and say, it's like, they don't get, fans just don't get it. And it's like, how do I, if they have to think about it, you've already lost. Right. So you want to keep it as simple as possible. But the, I think the other time is keep it genuine and authentic. Um, we don't, there's a lot of movement in the sports world to be kind of the snarky tweets, kind of the combative, and they're trying to have fun with it. Be kind of who, who you are as a brand. And that wouldn't like work for the Tampa Bay Lightning because one, who we are as a brand. And I don't think our fans would rally around that. They expect certain things from us, and they expect us to be world class in all that we do. So we're going to take that approach when how we how we interact with you know, whether it be the the competitive side of things or how we how we deal with other teams. If they put something at us, we're going to be very respectful of them as, as opponents. But sometimes know who we are as a brand. And I think some teams have kind of strayed off that because they want to be a certain thing, and, and they've kind of failed in that in, in that regard. So it's really understanding how you what your voice is. And in, in really, what your what your uh, your approach is? I, I think, as you guys talked earlier too, um, and Wayne said it himself, it's about the people who own it. And I, Dunkin' Donuts does a great job of that. In that, their mantra is that we don't own social media; our fans do, and they operate around that principle and they do it beautifully. And they also make de very good uh, delectable treats as well. Maybe you can help me get them on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne, anything to add to that? No, I, I think that James captured it really, really well. Um, you know, the more human, the more genuine we can be, the more that the brand reflects who you really are and who your fans are, just the better you're going to do um, and the more engagement you will drive from that genuineness. Totally agree. Now, James, again, this is a journey. You're, you're on the show because you're well on the journey and you've got a great story to share with uh, those who are watching the show or listening while they're working out in a podcast format. Um, but what I'd like to ask you to do, because we're getting short on time, we're down to a little bit over a minute now, what advice would you give to those that are early in the journey, you know, and they're not as far along as you, um, but they know they want to take this journey. They want to make the transition from social media to social business. Right. Well, I think we talked about it earlier too. Just make sure that what you're doing on channels are not about technology, it's about your objectives. 
Focus on business your objectives. business objectives first. Not just marketing objectives. Correct. And I, and I approach I take, the analogy I would take is a toolbox. You have different tools to do different things, but really you, you're trying to, you know you're trying to build something. So what tools are going to be the best to, to approach to do that? And I think the, the, the crucial part that we always talk about is just listening to them. And, and if you see something where they shout you, give you a nice shout out, hey, acknowledge that. And they're going to carry that to their fans. It's, it's funny how much... How simple, I, I see somebody on, on Twitter, simple Twitter interaction, they'll favor it, they'll, they'll tweet it, and they'll retweet it. And they'll do three actions from one comment they get right. from you. And it's just, that's simple. But if they do have a problem, reach out to them. Right. Um, and, 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 and make them an, an evangelist based upon how you've interacted with them and how you've made them feel. And I think that's the first, really the first steps in, in really growing that up. And then, and then I think the last part of it is, is continually look to what kind of content can I put on social media that they're going to enjoy? Whether it be inf inf informative, entertaining, but it's make, I make sure it's within your brand as well. Yep, absolutely. You mentioned listening. That is a great segue for our SBP. Do you know what our SBP is? Crim Crimson Hexagon. <laughs> well, it's social business promo. And that's where, Wayne, you get to be the SBP, our social business promo. What have you got for us on our inaugural Event. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Bernie. And thank you, James. Um, in the spirit of the social business engine show, we really want to focus on providing kind of continuing education um, for folks who are watching because we know that folks who are watching or listening are interested in becoming more of a social business. And one of the things that we put together specifically for the show that's available for download online is an ebook. Uh, as many of the uh, viewers and listeners are marketers, um, we know that marketers often have to go through rebranding exercises. And we've put together a detailed ebook that discovers or helps them discover why social media analysis can be a critical first step before you begin the rebranding process to gather that vital consumer intelligence that can inform all of the steps you take next. And I just want to let people know uh, what URL they can go to to find uh, that ebook. It's at crimsonhexagon.com forward slash SBE show. Again, crimsonhexagon.com forward slash SBE show, where they can get that ebook to download and, and view and read as they wish. Terrific. Well, thank you, Wayne. Uh, that sounds like a terrific ebook. Uh, those that are considering rebranding definitely need to download that ebook and consume it before they do their, their rebrand and just understand the importance of analysis and listening um, in, the, in the social interwebs uh, around the world. Well, that is about our wrap for our inaugural show of the Social Business Engine Digital TV show. I want to guess my I want to thank my guest James Royer from the Tampa Bay Lightning. Thank you so much for thank, being here today. Thank you for having me. Wayne, thank you so much for being our uh, co-host and of course lead sponsor. Um, our bandwidth sponsor is Content Marketing World, the uh, event for content marketers around the world. And uh, that's it for today. Until next time, uh, don't forget to follow our hashtag SBE show. Uh, I'm your host, Bernie Borges. Until next time, we'll see you.